the whole world and I yeah. just Exactly. Just like, yeah, I, funnily enough I ran into Jackie Press up in um Mouth. Oh did you? Yeah, I didn't, didn't bring up the, the fact that he was MIA when yeah. we ended him most. That's so. right. I sent him a little message on the chairs. Yeah, I sent him a little message um, the other day and just said sort of um hey, you know, but good to see you. And uh, as he did mention, he did say um because we're supposed to do the podcast, I mm -hmm. think, this Saturday. And then he had the soft opening. I think he'd done it all night of the night before. Typical Brisbane. That kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Right, yeah, good. Didn't have his phone on. <laughs> his phone was in one of like, his salesman's work van. And like, he was like, God, it's not like a brewery. But I think, you know, it's like it's not every, not every weekend you open your, your yeah, first yeah. pub. And that's a dream come true for that man. Yeah, and that'd be good for their as well, as well because like, you know, you're reliant on some of the factors if you're just, if you're just, you know, selling to other, other people and you've got, like, no cash flow sort of throughout the month and then you're hoping that people pay on time and there's no real guarantee that they're going to Yeah. 50% of the time they don't and then you're just sort of wondering how to pay yeah, the bills I'm next. I'm not the best at paying my bills punctually, uh, <laughs> so I can, I can only imagine. You I've can got, relate. I've got a physio who's chasing me out for the poor thing and I've got, um, yeah, accountants who... They're emailing an email that's a bit defunct at the moment, so I, can, yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk too much. But um, yeah, I guess when you've got we're a, just talking. Uh, I guess when you've got a bar and things, yeah, <laughs> it's going. It's, uh, it's, it's moving. But yeah, I guess when you've got a bar and stuff, people, buddy, you know that cash flow is really yeah, regular. Always swiping the card, and um, yeah, you're not you're giving it. To, you might have a tab system, but uh, that's what you've got dogs for. <laughs> chase them out of the pub, worst case scenario, and track them down. You're probably a good tackler as well. Oh, I can't imagine I'd be the uh, the hide muscle to, to track down any bad debt. Yeah. I'm a soft touch here. Yeah, you are. That much we know. But yeah, you wouldn't you don't have a bounce or anything here either, do you? We, mm -hmm. we had a bit though, actually, a couple of weeks ago, and I was the only one here. Really? Yeah. Luckily, um, <laughs> both the characters were. <laughs> I mean, nothing is going to hurt. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, were they on that sort of stage? No, I just think that that's their character in general. They're not real athletes, not, not bruises. No. Probably the first time for both of them. Did you break it up? <laughs> yeah. Regulars? Yeah. Both cases. I don't think they've actually run into each other here since, so that could be an awkward one to negotiate. Mm. Yeah, when that's sort of standing mm. there, pouring a beer, or <laughs> you're pouring beers and you turn around and see those two, you know, oh, shit, yeah. I'm going to have to play. Play peer mediator. Because mm. um, did they have a previous history? No, mm. not, not a negative one, at least as far as I was concerned. Mm. Mm. I've actually, yeah, I've never bloody worked in hospitality, but I've sort of uh, I've toyed with it because I ended up, I don't know, I ended up leaving my job doing like about four weeks before Christmas. I did so, yeah. Um, re aggravated a previous sex injury and um, <laughs> done my boy. So, literally crossing the road. Uh, doesn't One of the more dangerous things you can do. Yeah, well, I'm better on call. Yeah, it's kind of going a little bit fast, mate. A little bit of David Cash. <laughs> it's an Italian girl from work who commented on how I can get my legs pretty high, and previously I've been able to do that. So I gave it a, so a, you felt a, I gave it a bit of a Peter Alatini. Yeah, yeah, I right. think well, it was a Roby Road party, I don't know. <laughs> and then I just felt a twinge, so. Um, I yeah, think you've got to stop impressing and telling you girls. Yeah. yeah, I know, and I'm taken as well. So uh, yeah, there you go, that's about how they, they know each other, that's fine. But, um, but yeah, so for me it's a bit, at the moment I'm like, what am I going to do? But I've actually, you just asked before why Melbourne, one of the sort of, what I've been thinking for quite a while is I'd actually, I think I might have touched on this with you, I'd quite like to go to sell and craft like booze. Right. To sell craft beer, wine and coffee, I think. It's a sort of, Find the stuff really interesting, yeah. really tasty, and, and whatnot. Um, I think there could be worse markets to, to be in. Yeah. Um, however, I would also warn you yeah. that um, I've been told by a few alcohol salesmen that it's a absolute glamour show, and you know it's all the best looking girls and the sharpest looking blokes. But uh, you best off selling dog food because it's just so competitive in alcohol because everyone wants to be there and wants to be seen doing that. Mm. Um, but you just you know sell them. Plastic pipes or yeah. gravel or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you're actually, yeah. shifting the units and making the money. I know a few people who've managed to, I don't know, brainwash themselves to be passionate about shit like that. And <laughs> well, so. Yeah, it's, it just it does sound like the dream job. I think, doesn't it? Selling booze, mm. but I'm sure it's not. Well, the ninety percent of it is just being in front of the bar owner or manager, 
and you know presenting yourself and having them like you and you know the sale is almost secondary to that yeah so and I think you'd be pretty good at that sort of core role yeah yeah, so. yeah well hey, let's talk <laughs> um, but yeah because do you do that for Brumo um, not really so that's how it started uh, when I first got back from the UK uh, we worked out pretty quickly that I wasn't a natural salesman I think I you saying that. didn't have the real that killer instinct that, killer that, that drive um, so we've, we've outsourced that work to a couple of blokes who could do a lot better job than I did. And we're so kind of oversee it now. Yeah, yeah. Where are they based? They're Christchurch? They're Christchurch and they just kind of go up and down the country. North yeah. Island, are they? Yep. Yeah. So are they employed by you guys? Are they contract you? They are more contract than anything else. Get out of the shop. <laughs> get out of it. Keeps um, it authentic. It's good. It's a running brewery here, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's operational. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, not a, it's not a stage set. Yeah. We can't have dry patrons, it would be more preferred. <laughs> Um, Keeps it organic. Yeah. What was I saying? Yeah, so so they're they're commission based. Um, yeah. So they're not sole Brew Moon operators. They also work for a, a wine company also based in North Canterbury. So it's pretty good cool. synergy between the two. Nice. Yeah. yeah well, the, I, I kind of you know maybe mentioned this here. Well, because the so obviously with this podcast TV show thing, the name has been you know, it's been a bit of a fucking. Uh, Deliberation about that, but a lot of people think the name I want to go with is too long. But I spoke to Crosby about it last night, and, and I might even make more um, the request of Sarah Rob's grandmother Pam, who wants to call it Hugh Show. Um, she is a lovely lady. But right, the Robs have very rarely put you wrong as well. So. Yeah, no, they're great. Yeah, you see, the, the Hugh Show, I mean, what I'd always thought it's a fucking mouthful typically would be you know, unearthing and evoking the human spirit with Hugh. Right, so that's that's what's written down in the book. Okay. Which I wrote down. Uh, the idea came about on the sale of Croatia. I thought I'd start. You know, I thought about it for a long time. And I was able to start a you know, TV show, rah, 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 and then I kind of started thinking about how I'd go about it. And um, in, a, in a slightly altered state on the way back from Melbourne, I got my little notebook out and I wrote that. And I wrote. I don't know, I'd been speaking to people about it for a long period of time, but. Um, I wrote like series one and it was literally craft like craft food, so I was in chat with like, Crazy, yourself and then DC. Right. And then I sort of had an idea which was like fuck you know. I mean if you could get someone I think I do know someone in the coffee industry with the farmer, but if you could um, if you could set up your own probably like those guys, but they've got your own business selling wine, boom, cider, and wherever, like it'd be a pretty pretty cool gig and you kinda of diversify your, yourself across the yeah, pull four portfolio over there, exactly. or something. Yes, yeah, right. not to eggs in one basket. No, um, you just kind of alter yourself to what it was hot at that particular time. Yeah, and luckily, I guess craft beer is hot at the moment. It's so. really fucking hot. Yeah, because um, when you were doing that sales stuff, were you just literally going and would you like cold? Would you give them a bell and say, "Hey, Oscar here, I'm going to come say good day." Would you go and have a, a beer and then like, quite casually be like, "Hey." Tried yeah, we well, sort of had been stomped out for me a little bit by the fact that we've been around for a long time um, and had a, a sales, I mean, sorry, a distributor who was taking it around the country, just not in huge volumes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, most had, I guess, heard the name. It's just about sort of putting a face to it and, you know, reminding them that it was a good drop and well worth their while. And we're here and yeah. it's a, a family business and down exactly. to all that. And when you're doing that, or like your sales reps, are they mostly selling to like pubs, restaurants? Are they selling to like supermarkets, off license? Yeah, the, probably the the area that we've grown the most is lately is the, the supermarket area because probably 95% of the pubs in New Zealand are, are under contract with one of the, the big three breweries. So Lion, DB, and Independent. Yeah. So that ties up their all their taps in most cases, and probably 70, 80 percent of their fridge. Yeah. Um, so so there's very little room for anyone to manoeuvre really. Yeah. Um, but supermarkets aren't kind of bound to that sort of thing. No. They literally put on the shelves what's moving, what people want to drink. Yeah. So craft is probably cutting a lot into that sort of what they call premium beer, which is the Heineken's, the Steinlagers, that, that type of thing, yeah. cutting into their tour through pretty yeah, heavily. And also wine. I think wine's taken a bit of hit. Yeah. Um, well, not wine, but um, those beers taste like water, I think, once you drink the, the tasty stuff. <laughs> well, <that's> like, like, <laughs> like, you, know, you, you consider make, yourself transformed with it. I, re- I honestly reckon, yeah. I struggle. I, um, I, mean, I don't want 
name names or throw anyone under the bus, but I was down in Meraki the other day with um, Kelly, and this is, we went to the Meraki Tavern. And are you familiar with that brewery down in Omru Scots? I am, yeah. I think we just, they had the wrong beer on tap and it was like just drinking all the sort of thing in the space so I had more of a I went for the maximum blocker instead but it's like I sort of gave me a bit of grief about choosing that and uh, I don't think she was that happy about that choosing that. <laughs> I'm lying, I don't complain but no, I, I don't think it's pretty hard to go back and for a stage there probably people would like, oh if you like craft beer, you're a bit of a point here and then pretty, pretty soon it'll get to the point where yeah, if you're not into it, maybe, then, then, you're, then you're in the minority. And you're like, you know, they're just like asking questions about your, your palate and, I don't know, like um, sexuality. Sex, yeah, sexuality. <laughs> <perhaps>. <laughs> Those are nice. Stuff. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably where we were hoping it goes, and mm. that's where it's gone sort of, I guess, mature, more mature beer markets than New Zealand, the likes of Canada and the States, where the craft beer is the norm, whether you're an 18 year old girl or 45 year old bloke, yeah. you're going to have a beer, you want something with flavour and, and you know you know the brewery, you, you might know the brewers, but you, there's a face to that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they they value that and we hope that the Kiwis, well they're, they're starting to take off on it. So, yeah. um, and probably the analogy that I would use is 20 or 25 years ago, people in New Zealand didn't give a shit about coffee. You no. can have a and it's the Makona, and you probably wouldn't get the hood. Yeah. But now, if you were going to go out, a sophisticated 20 something, so you can go out for brunch or lunch, and we didn't get served a decent flat white, yeah. then we'd be asking questions. And then, yeah, then yeah. I think that, that that may well hold true for beer, it may not. Yeah. People may never sort of come around like that, but I think that, generally speaking, people want something that someone's put a bit of time and effort into and actually has a, a decent flavour. A bit more boutique than the, the mass mm. produced stuff and I get people often buy into like the bloody story I think as well, you know, like um, for me, you know, I start watching a rugby or cricket game and I like, know someone, it's like a, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a lot of, it's <laughs> 10 times different. more riding. It's completely different, yeah, you know, yeah. Right? stay up past your bedtime and something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. for an Indian test, you know, you'll happily stay up at 3 yeah. or 4am. Yeah, you definitely yeah. would, yeah, yeah. especially with yeah. Dust Bowl yeah. and Karachi. As much as it hurts me to admit, especially with the school you went to, you've got a few people to watch. So you wait and don't that. But, um, no, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one because, I mean, yeah, there's like wines. I think wine probably historically, like, there's been more of like a story behind the wine, you know, like, yeah. on the back, beers, sort of like. But I think, you know, I think even some of the marketing, like, the, the cans can all look a bit funky and then, like, a little bit more of a bit of taste in there. There you go, brewed by a small family, a small shit, you know. So people buy into that stuff. Yeah, yeah, well that's what we're, we're hoping so. I mean you want a good product underneath all that, but um, you've got a, a sea of good products out there, then you've got to um, find another way to differentiate yourself and, and that's it's a pretty good one having people relate to it. Yeah. I mean like with that, do you guys advertise? No. So just word of mouth no, really you might do things like, um, mean, like do max. I'm doing Max bloody advertising, they might some billboards, no. Yeah, I'd, I'd say they've got some pretty extensive advertising. Um, they probably spend a lot on things like um, like uh, promotional pricing at supermarkets, things like that. It's another way to, to spend your marketing dollar. So, I mean, it's probably not something that I knew before I got into this game, but if you see a, a sales ticket on, a, on an item in a supermarket, generally that's because the brewery or the winery or whoever it is has made some sort of investment or, or whatever to lower the price yeah. of their product so it flies through for you know three weeks a month however long that promotion goes and yeah. once, maybe once people get a taste exactly yeah a couple of of, yeah to hope we get some, some conversion out of it I guess I think most 12 boxes of max are for about 24 dollars 99 and I'm probably going to place it to that for anything less than well you get a pretty fun cheap I got it for $11.48 Six beers for one pint from Buddy Wellington. <laughs> but I think I sent you a message because you guys were, um, when I was up in Bloomington on a sales trip, you guys had your cans for sale. You didn't send me a message because if you were the kind of told you were the boys a little bit about the, the story, and I was like, they were like, you grab a couple of craft beers after with my son, and I have a crack at that. They were the dark side of the moon. Which is bold and, and unusual for, for young blokes. Yeah, one was a pond. 
and it exactly. sounded way to explain. And then one was an American who I think knew what was doing that the horizon and pretty good pictures, but what generally speaking the stout market is um, age sixty plus yeah. and male. I've got a few mates who so I don't think you know, I think they're sixty and kinda of, I've always meant to be an old man, young age, <laughs> but I kind of can't really deal with the, with the scouts. Like, they have their own little classes and whatnot, but they've been going to it, etc. Yeah, yeah. You know, they talk about the coffee notes and chocolate notes and stuff. I like both. Like, you know, <laughs> maybe not necessarily <laughs> in the bacon there. <laughs> and the beer, I'm a big Pilsen man, and I'm probably like, especially if I'm looking at selling the fat body and it's, you know, as your taste buds are really involved, you go on to something yeah. more like some people probably find it personal. Well, I guess that's your, um, your gateway drug, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 that's how most would get into it. And then, you know, you get that sort of hot and the, the fruity nose, the, the bitterness. Um, but it's not super aggressive. And then, um, once that becomes the norm, you start, start searching for new norms. Yeah, it's like pornography. Exactly. It's, <laughs> a, it's a slippery slope. It becomes a little bit uh, desensitized to it all. Because mm. with this bad boy, are there like citrus notes in here? Uh, I would say more floral than citrus. Uh, the non hop there is a Nelson Hop Whitey. Yeah. Um, so, yes, more, more floral, a um, little bit of bitterness, but not super uh, fruity, I would say. That's, that's more character reserved for, for American hops, definitely speaking of some people's hops. But With the hops, do you guys go and source those yourself? How long have you been? You, do you use waiting hops for all of them? No, no, that was, that's exclusively those actually. Um, probably about 20, 25 hop varieties that, that we would use. Um, there would be, I guess, a hundred or more out there. Um, so, so, yeah. It's well, in New Zealand or in the world? In the world. Um, New Zealand have probably got about 15 to 20 established varieties, I uh, guess. Um, the Rewalk hops are the most famous, obviously. Rewalker is, yeah, yeah it's a good one, but um, interesting one actually, I find, and I think I'm in the minority here, I kind of find it smells like a, um, like a diesel engine. Okay. So, okay. so yeah, it's, it's, it's just the thing that, that a few people notice and everyone else looks at the way for like you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that is a super popular one. I'm a sucker for an American one, so um, mosaic or citra, and it looks really fruity, sort of punchy, tropical flavours. Um, that are, that are pretty interesting. And what, so you, do you guys use some of those? Mm. So you've probably got about six or seven American hops that we use them. Um, and that we don't, we don't have to source them directly, just a uh, company called New Zealand Hops. Um, so I was like, all those over from the States. Uh, and yeah. Have you been to like, the Hop depot or the, yeah, the <laughs> stuff like that, right? I've, I've driven through Hop Jamaica, depot. but I've, I've never, uh, I've never knocked on the door. Okay, yeah. yeah. I saw a good, like, uh, it might have been a country calendar, it was all about, like, one of the parrot dog boys. Yeah, fly like down, and I think they did, I might be able to rewalk a hop or something. Yeah, they also, yeah. they're putting it in planes and smelling it. That's a good cross and I'll check that. It was really grassroots. Uh, I'd like to see some photos of you going to show that or some footage. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what they were doing there is a thing called fresh hop. Um, so, so those hops weren't uh, processed at all. They were straight off the vine basically into a plane and into a beer, which yeah. gives a, a different sort of flavour profile than something that's been processed and, and put into to little pellets. Yeah. Um, basically the, the most obvious kind of uh, flavour difference is that it's a lot greener and a lot more bitterness. It's basically like just the hoppers, yeah, yeah. The, all the, the, the character that the, the hop creates in yeah. the beer. Um, so, yeah, it's basically just a very rugged version of that hop. It's not been sort of censored. Yeah. Um, so, some people love it and it's good for getting you know, a kit. But, yeah. Um, you guys done that here? No, well, India unfortunately finds that flavour very green and, and pretty unpleasant. So, I haven't managed to, uh, to talk around. Stuck it away. Oh, yeah, hell has no fury. Yeah, hell has no fury. No fear. Fear does well, I mean, from what I understand. I don't even know what she's talking about. Because, obviously, I don't know if you're Crosby Mangles, but I, think, I don't even know if I put two and two together. But I remember coming back on uh, like the New Zealand and you know, the Gelder magazine. 
to be a couple of years back from Bruno. Oh, right. I know that. Um, no, a, there you go, that's a big game advertising. <laughs> but that was like bag by like Reddit and it was a handler and then I don't know. But I remember when we came out for Mum's birthday, I thought like, it might have been then you spoke to me. Yeah, but you said that like, what your old lady used to make Vino. Yeah, and then, so, then yeah. over there, as the craft beer boom was happening. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yarn. Um, so, then you got a, a wine making job in California when I was five years old. Um, so we went over there three years and craft beer was just taking off there. That was the late 1990s. Yeah. Um, and so we came home early 2000s and sort of reasoned that if that was happening over in the States then the same would probably follow suit from yeah. New Zealand. And um, yeah, so it's proved to be. But uh, yes. So how long were you in um, America for? Three years. Uh, actually, so not really well, but yeah. Yeah, because it makes parts. I don't remember craft beer very well. No, not at that age, no. Although, you know, yeah. different parts of the world have different media tribe, and I imagine maybe even in certain parts of New Zealand, I believe, uh, <laughs> watched a documentary on Norm Hewitt. Oh, yeah. And, um, I think my brother, I'm not going to ask him one of those lines, and he reckons the first day of primary school he had a hangover. Because, <laughs> um, his job, his job, um, on his fifth birthday, was to go around and suck the frog off the swapper bottles. Right. And Dave uh, obviously, yeah. It's good to hear that <laughs> your, parents, your parents didn't, I don't know, that wasn't how you made your pocket money. I couldn't think of first one. <coughs> pocket, pocket money, that's for sure. But, I mean, your, like, your knowledge of beer is pretty fucking extensive. Um, do you reckon that comes about from the fact that you've just grown up in the, in the industry? Or have you learned shitloads since coming back? Yeah, a bit of both, I'd say. Um, I mean, mum and dad have both been pretty invested in good tasting stuff from an early age, so yeah. whether that was wine uh, or, or beer, we were going to have a beer that generally was going to be a good one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so my my university years, I worked at uh, Hop Garden. That's right. Uh, you know, well, Huey. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, and so that was that was probably my most sort of educational so even though the folks had a brewery for a long time. I was kind of, you know, I was labelling or bottling or something. I wasn't really sort of integrated into the product. No. Um, so that was where I was probably learned, learned sort of the, you know, the 101 of craft beer. Yeah. And then um, and then went over to the States and worked in um, Yosemite Valley for four months. And the job that I worked at had a pretty good range of beers. So um, that so was... Yosemite Valley, is it like near the Yellowstone? Same country, but... Uh, yeah, same country. But no, not the same state or anything. And so you worked in the pub, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and they don't have that whole um, uh, contracts or taps being contracted to, to the breweries over in the States. They, yeah. they consider that anti competitive behaviour. So it is cool. And that's why. Free for all. Yeah, so it's right. Yeah. So it's sort of the best man wins, I guess. Um, and that's why we've got such a great um, craft beer industry. It's because, you know. In New Zealand, we think that the craft beer industry is crowded. We've got, let's say, 10 or 15 in Christchurch. Yeah. It's the same as in the States, we have so many more, but you just wouldn't have 90% of the, the pubs tied up with Lion DB. I wonder, so, yeah, yeah I wonder if that'll change more, because like Lion and DB, but he uh, try and buy out some of the craft breweries, like Tuataro got bought out from that thing. Uh, Emerson's. Banhead. Yeah, it's been bought out, has it? Yeah. Good silver, silver stream boy. <laughs> they fought it. And a couple of, no, a lot of them are streamers if you didn't know that. <laughs> you know that? I think you told me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Posted. I learned that. Yeah, Dad. It's been great that we've done. That's what my father told me and Tony actually. He said, said that they're old boys doing some fucking heaving these days because Dan Head and I think one of them are on the face or three dogs just pump shit like back into the school. Right, yeah. Yeah, but Bone Face is, I think, owned by the guy that's um, yeah, I believe. I think, well, there's uh, some, some connection there, but I don't quote me. Perhaps don't put that on record. No, that's right. Well, we can, we'll be quite <laughs> drink it, mate. We can edit all this stuff. <laughs> um, I did hear a big story that the Panhead guy had house in um, Hunt Hunt. We have to say about $500,000 in it. He's a real estate agent. I should, probably shouldn't be saying that. We should have given him. But um, there's, he, uh, there's a house, I think, in my... Point Howard, around York Bay, Lowry Bay, and this real estate agent, some famous person who moved out 
the real estate agent was struggling to um, sell it, and then someone was like, why didn't you ask the guy out there? And he was like, go buy it. And then moved out of his 500 and went in front of the K house and buddy up hut and just gave it to his mate. And he was good mates from school, he said, you have no business me, have the house. So, Hopefully that could be uh, you <laughs> one day, and, and hopefully um, Crafty Mangles is the, is the, the benefactor. He's been there for a wee while, but um, yes. I mean, I, I guess one thing that could sort of like lead on to is like, how big do you guys want to go here? What's the what's the scope? Do you sell grog overseas? Mm. Um, yeah, tough one to answer, really. Uh, so all that you see behind us here is. Um, is an 1800 litre brew kit, yeah. and with that you can make, you know, if you're making 800 litres every time you brew, you can work through a pretty significant amount of beer in, in a year. Yeah. Um, I can't see us outgrowing that. I think even if we were to expand this whole operation in this building, this winter probably is going to be extended by about uh, five or seven metres or something like that. It is? Yeah. Um, give us a bit more space. That way. That way, yeah. Um, so, I mean, we are growing and we want to keep growing. It's, it's you know, sort of a sustainable rate, but yeah, yeah I, I don't think we're ever going to be sort of duking it out with the big guys. Yeah. Is that because of, you know, like, um, don't want to? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe mum and dad aren't getting any younger, or, <laughs> or like, I don't know, or like, I mean, you, you're a pretty, pretty cruisy guy in a few respects, and I don't know, I'm sure you work pretty bloody hard in here, but I feel like you need a bit of good lifestyle, a bit of travel, etc, etc, so you're like, if you were to, you know, really suit things up, then what would that, like, how much more work would there yeah. be and stuff, yeah. Um, I would say that mainly, you just well, you don't want to grow a monster. You yeah. don't want something that's enormous and all-consuming and then is not really a profitable business. I think you can be a profitable and worthwhile business giving you know, a lot back to the community, etc, etc, yeah. at quite a small size and you don't need to be... Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, hear, you hear a lot of stories about those businesses kind of losing their way as well. I mean, we do have employees here that work at the brewery. It's not yeah. just the family business, but if you keep it basically as the, the family at the core and, and having a, a say in, in all decisions, then I think you don't really want to outgrow that. Yeah, because I guess there's like a bit of reputation and things, and then as it, as it goes bigger, it can be hard and that quality control and things can get compromised. And yeah, exactly. And you hear so many stories about that, whether it's in the brewing industry or any other industry, but businesses that kind of just Lose, lose their touch, I guess. Yeah. Um, Again, forget what it's all about, making mm. good quality beer. And, yeah, exactly. Which is not to say that we wouldn't like to be marginally bigger than we really are now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So, so I don't know if I've given you an answer there, really. Ah, oh, there you go. I don't know. I think people need, you know, <laughs> draw their own conclusions. <laughs> and so they should. They could, they're working hard, they've got to work hard as well. Mm. Um, okay, yeah, it's still pretty. It's a, an interesting industry, I reckon. Like, and that's why, like, I mean, it's like, oh, you know, when you're chatting to people, you can chat to footy players and rah rah rah. But I think this is something that you know, a lot of people have got something to say about. We've got you know, wine, beer, and, and as with what Crazy's doing, hopefully cider. Mm. I saw a, a bogan and Methven order a, a cloudy apple cider at the Blue Pub yesterday, and I was like, shit, there you go. There's hope for everyone. Isn't that born. refreshing? Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so, you know, something the bourbon bottle will be raised. Yeah, and then mm. serves me right for um, for stereotyping. But um, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, even like the Emerson's got bought out for probably like 50 mil. Or something. Oh. I drove past their little, well, not little, but their brewery now. That's mm. fucking awesome. You said for four getting bought out, and and you know, obviously there's a lifestyle that it gives you and all that, but but you can really take your brewery to a whole other level, whether it be nationally or internationally or like, you know, globally. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, realistically you probably wouldn't achieve as an independent brewery. Yeah. Um, I guess you've just got to balance that with how much sort of power and say you, you relinquish when you do that. Yeah. Um, and if, what, if you were to sell, for instance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and I read somewhere 
that um, people go into business to make money very rarely end up doing so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably a pretty good thing to hold on to. Obviously, you want to make, make a buck on the side. You don't yeah. work 60 hour weeks just to, uh, you know, give great beer to the punter and, yeah. and take home your 50 something thousand dollar a year salary. No. But it's, it's about balancing that with, you know, the need to, to make yeah, millions. It's, it's an interesting way of putting it. So if you're passionate about something, then, you know, it's going to flow on into buddy everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Excuse me. Excuse the pun. <laughs> yeah, but, but, um, yeah, it's like I get. Yeah, it's like you know they, they say that yeah, happiness is the like the precursor to success, not the other way around sort of thing. But yeah, I guess if people are like money hungry, like it all seems pretty pretty laid back here. You know, people by their names. Yeah. You know, and it's like um, that probably all, all adds to the allure sort of thing. <coughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, it's not why you do it, but but it, it does have the kickback, and that people people who, if you like a business, you're going to support them. Yeah. And if the community supports a business, and that's going to grow and grow and grow and grow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's I guess it's a you know, you, your pros in both directions, really. Yeah. People like you. You're doing a good thing. Yeah. Um, and and you get some some financial kickback. Yeah. Bang. Mm. Yeah, it's, a, it's a cool sort of set up and I guess yeah, what people in Andley would probably love this place probably be quite proud of it in a few respects or yeah I, I would say that's a goal to, to have Amberlands proud of the, the fact or, or appreciative of the fact that, um, that the Brew Moon is based here yeah you know if they've got old mates or rallies coming into town and they say let's go down to this cool little um, brew we've got down the road make a bit of a it's day cool of yeah yeah um, yeah, mum and dad buddy enjoyed their birthday like that, you know. Oh, so, and we enjoyed her um her pickle, so Oh yeah, there you go. yeah, there you go, yeah. She buddy <laughs> she loved it, yeah. That was a that was a wicked day and yeah, I guess I mean, yeah, even like you know, New Zealand's pretty provincial in a lot of respects and I think, you know, it's, you know it's a lot of rugby rivalries, etc. etc. But um I don't know if I told you I'm not part of the North Otago Supporters Club. <laughs> You've not, that doesn't yeah, no. surprise me. So we're following North, well I missed out last year unfortunately. I always went up to Tim Valley and watched the Tim Valley Swamp Foxes. <laughs> um, and then the year before that we went to Carpety. Um, we went up to Laverne and watched the boys play Horofanu and we all normally surprise them. And then the year before that we went to Rotoria and um, on the East Coast and we watched them play in like, the East Coast. Um, but we always try and drink the beer from that region. So, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah as you're sort of saying, but <laughs> you hope that if, you know, people, people from Amberley, yeah, put Amberley on the map, because yeah. you've, you've, you've got, you know, a town of 15,000 ambassadors, so to speak. Yeah. And, which is not to say that 15,000 Amberlands drink brew and beer, but, but um, I guess that's the, that's the goal, isn't it? Yeah, hell of a photo, wouldn't it? It would. I yeah. Know, con the glasses will congregate down at the, I don't know. The domain. The tin shed, we call it. The tin shed, yeah. 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 <laughs> You produced a couple of um, famous things, obviously Charles Upham first of all. Yeah, I'm glad that he was the first name of the yeah, uh, most important. Yeah, definitely. Two Victoria Crosses, and he was in the 21st Battalion, the same battalion as my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> I think your old man mentioned that once yeah, or twice. Yeah, he's pretty proud of it. I think. <laughs> um, uh, and Jeremy Poff, your primary school mate, did a spe speech on him. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I thought Jeremy Poff was the second name. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, there you go, John. <laughs> Shit, far out. No, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, I think, I'm trying to think of Poff. I think Poff maybe did his year eight speech. Well, he did a speech at St. Ben's, I'm pretty sure, on Charles Upham. And then right. the, his other one was on his dog, Dodger. Okay. Um, and do you know Christian O'Fagan? <laughs> I do. I do. So, yeah. Christian O'Fagan, after that, started calling Poff Dodger. And we just walked around St. Ben's and went, Dodger! <laughs> and, right. I think Poff regrets it. Yeah, I'm not going to eat stuff. Then you've got Brody, Brody Retallick, and then you've got, um, I guess, yeah, you've got Brody Moon as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if many would rattle us off as third, but um, hopefully in years yes. to come. Yeah. Mm. Knocking big roads off his, uh, off his totem pole. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's even like something that probably features in like uh, tourism brochures and stuff, you know, like a brewery tour or like a. Yeah, yeah. You know, pop into this brewery, like nice places to eat and drink. Like, South on the tour and you see that a little bit. So. Mm. Like I said to you before, like 60% of our clientele are local, 30% of tourists, and 10% of bits and bobs. But yeah, but yeah that tourist Truck market drivers. is yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, that, that 
tourism market is is huge, and, and being able to, I, I get it because you know if you're a young traveller and you you need somewhere to eat and drink, you know, a place attached to a brewery where your beer's literally coming out of the wall and being able to look through and, and have a walk around and in, in amongst this is is a pretty cool thing. I think. And then you can see the lady who makes it pull up on her bike. Exactly. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and yeah, chew the fat a little bit. But that's I think the thing that we have is that everyone here is has a connection to the bloke pouring you your beer. Might yeah. might have been the head brewer at one stage. Yeah. Um, and is so he, is that like your old man? Yeah. Yeah. So he knows how to make the stuff as well. He yeah. does. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> probably improved a little bit since he was uh, sort of in charge. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's. That's a pretty cool thing about the, the brew pub, so to speak, and, and like it's the craft beer industry that that sort of the, the bigger players can't match is, is that sort of investment at, at the source. Yeah, I think yeah, there, there is something freaking awesome about having a bloody beer and like you can see the bats and mm. et cetera, et cetera, and it's all, yeah, pretty authentic. Like, I don't know if you can really dip, make the space where you really can, but I mean, I went to Eruption Brewing the other day. Oh, yeah. And um, in Big Peninsula. Josh Watkins actually um, helped out with the engineering there and he showed me, they made my home school, and he showed me some models and they were made of, well, I thought they were made of balsa wood and I, he, he's like, yeah, takes himself a bit seriously and so <laughs> I told all the boys that Gary's like making this balsa wood bar and he gets pretty funny, I nothing about it all, but I got them there and had a, had a beer there too, but it is pretty cool, because would you consider this like a gastro pub, because it's mostly pizza and beers? Yeah, I think gastro pub would probably be overstating it mm. slightly. We keep it pretty simple. To be fair, food's not what we really know particularly well. No. So there was actually an idea moved at the start to um, to have BYO food and, and we'd supply the uh, the alcohol. Really? Um, yeah, but I think there was a, a licensing issue that cropped up there. Yeah, there should be a few hoops to jump through. Mm. Um, so yeah, we just chucked the, the pizza oven out in the courtyard and um, and it's gone pretty well. Yeah, there's not much you can't cook in a pizza oven, so I've just added some burgers to the menu, which, uh, you know, it's still very simple, but... Yeah. Mm. Cool, because how long have you guys been at this site? You moved out, didn't you? Yeah, so originally started in 2002 down the road, about um, 2Ks south of Amberley. Um, and we were just doing the brewing side of it, and, and the cafe was run by someone else. But the, the actual brewing space was probably about a third of what you're looking at here. So we didn't, we couldn't actually produce as much as we needed to, and, and the, we couldn't produce the range either. So now we've got about 16 beers on tap, as opposed to about six. Yeah, that I, I think it looks like there's even a few more than what we were the last time I was here, which was long ago. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah. We try and keep the taps pretty full yeah. most of the time. Yeah, we've got a nice, mm. nice shutter side. <laughs> makes sense in this neck of the woods, but um, but yeah, that that move probably happened about two or three years ago. Yeah, um, down to this joint. I guess you get more foot traffic and things. Yeah, yeah maybe come from more like Amberley locals, but you know, go for a stroll. Or we consider ourselves in downtown, downtown Amberley now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the CBD. Because <laughs> um, yeah, you've got the big sign up there as well. Obviously. Yeah. Like, was that hard to get done? No, not particularly. I think you've just got to. Um, if we were simply a bar, then then they wouldn't have given it to us. But the fact that we're sort of a production facility and a it's a retail facility, so to yeah, speak, yeah. Um, and we make an effort to tell the story, so to speak. So, so it was actually one of the requirements that, that we would do tours and things like that. So you guys do um, do tours? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we want to be organised ahead of time. It's not yeah. great when someone just rolls up at the busiest hour and says, "Can I have a look down the brewery?" Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we do tours, and um, so yeah, if, if you I guess that was what they were looking for. So, and, um, and once we took all those boxes, they were happy to give us a big sign on the main road saying, we're moving to company, get that so way. That's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. You, you build it and the people will come. Sort of thing. <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, because, yeah, that's like, yeah, just pretty good for tourism. Mm. Pretty friendly. Yeah. And so what, if someone wants to go on a tour, what do they do? Look you up online and give you a phone call? Yeah, just give us a bell and yeah. you know, send an email. And you've got a website and is there like a thing that says tours? Uh, yes, but it's not like a sort of link, link button, you yeah. just flip through an email and say, yeah. men, men and fellas are looking for a tour, can you facilitate? Sweet as. Do many people do, how, how many would you do? Not heaps, more sort of that, um, that November, December, Christmas party time of year, um, yeah. where, where people are on work functions and they're kind of, you know, 
beefs out their experience a bit. They're not yeah. just sitting at a table smashing booze the whole time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which the boss likes. So yeah, yeah, you can spread it out a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Learn a little bit and mm. a bit more extracurricular. And do yeah. you run those tours? I've uh, done a few of them, yeah. 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 I try and delegate that one to me because I, I figure people want to hear from the, uh, you know, the master, yeah, the, the matriarch. Of course, it's now. I was talking about you, you running, you, you running the tours. Oh, it's not noisy, well done. Right? No, it's, it's fine. Go for it. All. It's all part of it. Um, doing a bit of a canning day tomorrow, so should be right. Okay. Just, just sitting up there. Yeah, this is, yeah, there's probably just a lot of aspects to it all that you sort of, and you're a consumer. I say it's fairly consistent amongst uh, most industries though. Yeah, yeah, it's always a little more complicated than it, than it seems. Yeah, you don't have what, to... What goes on? Because your brother, does he work here or he did? He did. So Tobes was, was the head brewer here at one stage. In fact, I'm the only member of the uh, McCauley family, McCauley Gould family, not to be a uh, head brewer at the brew room thus far. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, started with Dad. Then we took over for a bit, so he's had a spell and, and then so I was back your dad there. was the first person? Yeah. And did your mum advise? Yeah. Even though yeah. he might not <laughs> like to admit that, and <laughs> probably definitely does not. Okay. Consultant, so to Doesn't want that broadcast, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess she had the, uh, the scientific know-how. Yeah. There's a little bit of crossover between one and there. She says not heaps, but you're basically still staying with the, uh, a sweet liquid that you had used to to um, produce alcohol. So. Yeah, and that kind of, it's the, the same crux of it. There's just a few um, specifics that you need to alter. Yeah, mm. there's no yeast in, um, in wine, is there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, there you go. Did you know that, Josh? Oh, I don't know. If you put me on the spot, probably would have uh, <laughs> taken a 50 50 punt and hopefully yeah, back myself. Well, there you go. I did not, uh, not know that. Uh, you learn something new. Yeah. Bindi, can we confirm that there's yeast in wine? Yeast in wine? Yeah. There How do you get alcohol? Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly We're asking the tough questions here, eh? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a real problem. That's the most basic size. Okay, there you go. Oh, Very I'm good. Not, I'm going to be yeah. <laughs> on the stage here, <laughs> You've heard it here first. Far out, there you go. I blame my science teacher. Well, after um, recent staff articles, we won't go into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Good, here's my, here's my. That's a bit too much. Nothing happened. <laughs> nothing, nothing happened. But I am the way I am for a reason. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later on. Yeah, right, yeah. I'm not that good. We'll talk about that later on. You can edit the shit out of that Mongolia tree. Um, I went to Christ College. <laughs> you want to save ten grand and I don't know, your, your child's peace of mind? That's in a minute. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, obviously, so then, for you, brewing, is that something you want to do? That's a, a goal or not um, really? No, not, not really, not, not that kind of... I'd like to know more, and I'm, I guess, learning more about kind of what the role entails. But I, I would like to sort of just look at the business more generally. So I guess that's kind of the, the thing that I'm doing at the moment, is just taking care of the, the sales and, and marketing side of it, what marketing we do kind of have a, a bit of an eye on the production yeah. and, um, and look at the accounts and that sort of thing. So we're just trying to get a, a genuine grasp on what the business is doing and not be super stuck on you know production or sales or finances. Yeah. In broader terms. Yeah, I guess. Because you studied commerce. I did. I did a bit of um, accounting, marketing and media in yeah. Victoria. And Wellington has turned out it's a pretty good place to uh, to do my studies, yeah. as I mentioned, but it's yeah. my first round in craft beer, craft beer yeah. yeah, drinking. Mm. They say it's the craft beer captain of buddy New Zealand, don't they? I think that's yeah. probably fair enough. Nelson buying for it, probably, in terms oh, of yeah. per capita, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. And Amberley. And Amberley, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, snapping at the heels. Be number three, yeah. <laughs> closing on, closing in. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, because what, what would you say out of those has been the most like, useful doing what you do it? Having the, the media or the was it? Uh, marketing, strong stuff. Probably the accounting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, not that we ever touched zero while we were um, studying accounting. Yeah. Which is pretty much all I deal with now. But yeah, as far as that general 
sort of business grounding goes. I think um, accountancy is uh, certainly pretty well. Yeah. There was still a lot of learning on yeah. the go. And once or twice, Linda looked at me like I was going to learn it. I hadn't spent any time in tertiary education. No. But, uh, but yeah. Accounting. Yeah. Yeah, because some transferable skills at least. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah, because I was pretty bad enough. I told you I was brought up to be a bank accountant pretty much. Oh, wow. Mum and Dad put the heat on. And a lot of wealthy uncles who were accountants. Yeah. And they studied things that they were interested in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
yeah. some bills to pay or I don't know. But um, I think my my plan with uni was to um, I guess not like it wouldn't pigeonhole me too much. I had some some various things that I thought I, I could do. One sort of business marketing and that sort of journalism thing. And I thought that that degree would give me a bit of a a scope for each of them and a, a bit of a, um, a bouncing ball I guess to, to, to attack which is one I please. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'd do it differently if I had my time. I'm probably not pretty happy with how this all worked out. Although if you'd told me at university that I'd be working with my parents at uh, at twenty eight or twenty seven years old I am probably uh probably slap you and then slap myself. Yeah tell me tell me dreaming. Um, but it is a pretty cool combo. Right? That was a cool sound effect, wasn't it, Josh? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a pretty cool combo, though. Because, yeah, you've got you know, your business knowledge, which can, most people need, and then that whole media side. And shit, yeah, the world's a bloody oyster, as everyone tells us, we're still young. Yeah. Some, sometimes it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> but, um, oh, bloody good. Well, um, yeah, I mean, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's been pretty good so far. Shared it. 50 minutes. Shit, a little bit. 5 of zero. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. So, time, time flies. Time flies, guys. Yeah, we're having fun. So, I think, you know, we've shared a little bit. Of... <laughs> it's all got to be edited. Yeah, for sure. We've actually just gone live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, Google, on Google TV. Hey, um, tell me tell your words that I've got the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Somebody had to hear Brain Dice Geek idea to, um, Put Toby up on one of these tanks to do a um, like a tasting notes on a beer. So talk them through the, the flavours and the characteristics and things like that. Yeah, he to he Toby. Toby's being the anyway. big brother. Okay. Yeah. And it was there. just the most cringe-inducing thing you've ever seen. He kind of had like his knees around his face, and he was trying. He's not right in front of the camera anyway. Is he a solid yeah. burner? He's a big unit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got really? What? Sorry. I kept thinking he was going to fall off the tank, he yeah. looked as nervous as. It was hard work. And who was chatting to him? <laughs> uh, the lady who was doing our, um, I guess, social media at the time. Okay, yeah. yeah. So do you have someone who does your social media? Uh, do do formally. We do. Yeah. Well, yeah. This guy occasionally uh, <laughs> falls vacant on his role there. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. That's right. Oh, what did you say? Uh, this week. I imagine so. I thought you said he could have, have a week checked? off or something. <laughs> Why? Why? Why would you check? Because yeah. Jamie's saying it's you. Oh, I thought you meant available through the bar. No. I'm the state on the social media. Uh, social media, what do you guys on Facebook? Instagram? It's Instagram. Uh, don't do all the tweeting. I think we do have an account, but yeah, it's pretty classic. Yeah. There you go. Um, it's awesome yeah, yeah. New Year's resolution. <laughs> Start, Start tweeting. tweeting on behalf of Bruno. Sure, cool. Something about just the term tweeting makes you think of teenage girls. Yeah. It's just high and annoying and just not a good tone. For some reason I feel, yeah, there you go. That's what I'm like, putting it. I always still think of like, I don't know, just opinionated old men, probably like my, my father. Thankfully, he doesn't have Twitter. <laughs> Shut down pretty quickly. <laughs> I thought he did have social media. Yeah, well, Facebook. He's got four different accounts. Doesn't he even have the occasional rant? Oh, yeah, big time. So he had a couple that just this week, not on social media, just at home. Quite serious. <laughs> Australia and stuff. And yeah, well, he's a, he's a cat. Yeah. He's <laughs> he is speaking cat, so. his mind. And he absolutely hates Australia at the moment. He showed me right. the other day, um, the other night, he pulled me over and showed me the underarm incident on YouTube. And just worked himself up. Yeah, and he worked himself up into it. Really that actually yeah. came up around the um, call we doing table the other night. Um, Did it? Just <laughs> regarding the whole sandpaper incident. Yeah. Um, and those fellas blown again. And, and yeah, Nation of Cheats, apparently. Yeah, I saw something. Convict. I saw Convict. Yeah, yeah Convict, unfortunately. I've got yeah, ancestors from Tasmania or something like that. Um, but, um, <laughs> but was it Richie Benno? I saw like a him on like, must have been nine, channel nine, straight after that incident. And he was like scathing about it. Like, it's like mm. the worst thing I've ever seen in well, Rich, cricket. Richie's one of a few gems to come out of Australia, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then I don't know who else is still probably Darren Lockyer, yeah. Jonathan Thurston. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those guys. I'm a big fan of David Pocock. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, he's got some. Um, 
divided opinions, but uh, divisive opinions. Yeah. But, uh, but I like a man that sticks with his guns like that. Yeah. He's a hell of a footy player. Thank you, man. Have you, have you watched this documentary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And sleeping bags out to the homeless and he seems mm. like a chained himself to bloody oil rigs. He's a, <laughs> he's a pretty he's cool, a special human. Sure. Probably, probably uh, maybe we are segueing right now into your sports media. Oh, yeah, I thought we were segueing into you uh, interviewing David Polk on me. You play characters here. Yes. <laughs> that should be a hell of a step up. I want to go upwards. <laughs> upwards, just, you know, there you go. So um, this will probably be a one hit wonder. You know, not many Austin McCoys out there, but um, oh, bloody good. Well, I mean, I don't even know if I had any more questions for you, mm. other than, you know, what did I expect to be asked? Yeah, go on, what did you expect um, to be asked? I'll tell you what, I might um, have this bad boy, worst case scenario, and then go, you can drive that car home. No. No deal? No, no. maybe. Uh, <laughs> no. Is that a yes or a no? It's your car, you do Yeah. I'll have it if you do. No, let's do that. I can do that. Um, well, yeah, what questions were you expecting to be asked? I was, I was expecting that kind of general flow, and then I thought perhaps you don't say we should change it either. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. Um, the, I, I it's it's grey out there, like but you know, yeah. it's warm. <laughs> yeah, I can feel the warm. Yeah. Do you trust me pouring you one? Hundred percent. Yeah. Turn it down the lot there. Yeah, turn the label down, won't it? Yeah, that is not good for someone like me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have much common sense. Yeah. Uh, so I thought you might um, might conclude with like a um, like a five quick five questions like Rolling Stones or Bee Gees. Um, oh yeah. Avril or Madonna. Cool. Um, Music based. Yeah, well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, okay. Wife okay. fronts or jockeys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there you go. Well, um, you sure as you got a few of them. You obviously thought about that. Um, <laughs> which is better than most people. Um, if you could. Have you know, four people to dinner? Oh. Who would that be? Shit. This one I hadn't prepped an answer for. Um, I mean, you, you need a giggle. Yeah. Um, so I think with a few vinos on board, Ricky Gervais would be pretty inappropriate and, and um, a pretty good value. Um, I need some eye candy, so... I'm a bit of a sucker for like a, a Matt Portman. Okay. Yeah. Um, Smart friends are for you, I've just seen my Yeah, that's okay. Uh, actress. Yeah. I've done some weird stuff in the year, but maybe watch uh, No Strings Attached and that's probably her best work. Okay, cool, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Muso, maybe like a... Sure, like a, a Mick Jagger would be good fun. Mm. Sure, him and Ricky would kick it off, and yeah. there'd, there'd be some uh, some playing up going on. And you probably want an intellect like a um, um, like a Noam Chomsky. Okay, no Noam. Is he like a philosopher? He is, yeah. From Germany? Uh, I think he's American. Okay, yeah, and he. You wouldn't pick it though, based on sort of uh, philosophies and, and mantras. He very much reigns on the, uh, the American government. But uh, okay. yeah, no, he's, he's a pretty sharp mind. There you go. Um, so I hadn't prepped that at all, but no. I think I got four. Yeah, I think you've done well as well, and you've covered a lot of bases there. And then, I mean, um, I believe you played second five. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Still playing, haven't you? Yeah, okay. well, excuse me. I know you did have a little bit of time there. I was a little sabbatical last yeah, year, yeah. yeah. Well, I put my legs down a couple few earlier. Like, I had, I had Logan, a, didn't you? Yeah, I had a little spell after the university. Um, not entirely voluntary. Yeah. And then um, I actually played for the Anglin team, my fiddler, in the last last minute of the final. Um, but the boys hung on for a, for a sweet time, so that was ah, nice. Uh, that yeah. 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 I think um, <laughs> I think I've won one final. Now's against the boys' height. I find that very hard to believe. Ironically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. George Jingham doing a huck, <laughs> doing a huck it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. What, to kick the game off? Oh, man, yeah. I know it's disrespectful to smile and huck it, but George Jingham's <laughs> giving you a huck it. Holy cow, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so, my question for you 
Oh, I give you less or more? Um, I'll, just, I'll give you, I'll give you three. Aaron Major, Luke McAllister, or Man on it. Um, oh. yeah. See, I'd love to go in a World Cup final. I'd love to go into that for Lucky McAllister here. So I think he is an absolute scapegoat for that 2007 World Cup <laughs> um, quarterfinal. Yeah. However, he's not my choice, but I'd just like to put it on the record. Alex Ritchie, stop blaming him. Get I'm with life. you, Alex Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go with my heart. He did it. He got it done a couple of years in a row. A couple of years in a row, I think so. Yeah, he did it. Yeah. Um, uh, Aaron Major, fast up the wazoo, but, um, but just never, never brought it home. No. And, you know, was he a 10, was he a 12? Who knows? Oh, yeah, that's a touchy one for me. I'm a big fan. I think it would have been a completely different outcome in 2007 if he was there. He was a drop goal specialist. Obviously, he didn't go to the right school. It's not his fault. He comes from a poor town. And, um, An unpolished gym, you think? Yeah, are you, well, I don't think that's a bit rough. Oh, oh right. I think he was quite posh, yeah. Well, I thought as far as you know, it's, it's poor school. And yeah, poor school, really state school, yeah. yeah. That's, not, that's not his fault. Um, it's nice that yeah, the government helped people out in those situations. <laughs> um, we have no faith or backbone. But no, one foot long ball. You know, Luby money ball, I think. I just thought he was the man. Um, no, lots and, of like about him, for sure. And just drop, yeah, just drop goals as well. That's what we needed in 2007. But then, yeah, you're right, I think we've on it. He evolved his game and long balls even to yeah. a kicking game. Maybe a left foot option in the back line, I think, as well. Some of those long balls he threw were just real. Yeah. yeah. Really developed the distribution. So, yeah, block it in. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Nice. I, um, I agree, yeah, he's definitely put up to that. Hands down, I think Matthew Gaffigan was from in Bristol when he was making on about some French guys. I think they were heard of. But I think he was like Fofana. Maybe, yeah. Mm. Excuse my ignorance, yeah. But I think Manon is probably yeah, the second fight we've had in well, a long time in the world as well. So it'll be interesting to see what um, he does when he combines with Leon McDonald up in. Uh, yeah, I think you should yeah. say that because I'm, I'm a huge uh, Tano Umanga fan and he's just taken a little step back up the blues, which is probably not a bad thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, it'll be a tough pill to swallow. But, um, yeah, proud man Tano, but. Um, you know, he knew what the right thing was. Mm. So, and I think the reins over to Panadol. As bad as it sounds, yeah, Panadol, yeah, as bad as it sounds, I think it could be quite good. I'd like to see Auckland do pretty well this year. I think it would be good for New Zealand rugby, like, that's controversial. Some people would agree with that, but I think it was good how the what Auckland um, rugby union afternoon footy for that final. Free, mm. free you know, no match fees. Yeah. Decent crowd, and um, yeah, be nice to for that. Crusaders um, lose game to actually mean something. Yeah, that's true. Probably the, the best and oldest rivalry in the uh, in our game. Yeah, you got ran for the shield. And then, yeah, the, the, you know, people used to say, well, we're not going to make me strong, New Zealand make me strong, but it's been in Canada, make me strong, New Zealand make me strong, and play, which really runs me like, I know. Because <laughs> I said that after the Crusaders beat the Hurricanes. I can't remember what year it was. It must have been when we went over and beat the Lions, and we played them just before. In the finals or something like that, we played out back and lots of Hurricane supporters were born and bred and as soon as they won I stood up and said that and they knew it was coming but they still couldn't help themselves. <laughs> People would love to hate Canterbury, don't they? And they're, well, they're, they're easily hated, I think. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know why they play such an expensive brand of rugby, but yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. But um, oh, bloody good one, I think we would leave it there with the, um, the questions. We concluded. Friday. What are your plans? We've got a couple of um, couple of taps behind us, so yeah, yeah. Rip in and maybe I'll tell Josh Watkins to bring the scallops and bacon to us. We got a nice message from him earlier telling me he's got my favourite kind of wine at his house. Yeah, champion. He's hoarded them for years, but I think obviously after Melbourne, I think he might. So it's just the yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll get home later on and help Dad with the social media. And <laughs> yes. I don't know. I think we can make headlines and I don't know, break up the Anglican Church, but we shouldn't get into religion and politics. <laughs> it's dangerous territory, they say so. Uh, well, hey, thanks very much, mate. It's been a pleasure. And thanks for having me, Huey. Couldn't think of anyone better, mate. So, uh, well, you pop the cherry. Hopefully, um, yeah.
fucking wade through the drinks and pull out some good stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that can be, that's Josh's role. Oh, yeah. yeah. fucking driving in that. That's my role. <laughs> but, um, no, it's been fucking cool and, yeah, nice to bloody get it done. And, um, we spoke about it a bit while ago. Thanks for being such a fucking good sport on a bloody Friday evening. Shit, you're a bit of a natural, mate. Uh, Chief, definitely review the footage first. Then. You're a natural. We have to but next time. I don't know. I'll fucking <laughs> sort this groin out, and I'll um, I don't know. Work on the tennis or something, and you can interview me or something. Oh, that's beautiful. Very good.